been home since one or two, twelve. Okay. Well, thank you. Much. But I think. Well, welcome. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know that you need to go through the survey question by question anyway. I didn't even look at it. Did you have copies? Just now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys, ready? Did you bring extra copies? Yeah, oh. <laughs> there you go, Jack. <laughs> Jack. You want to give one to David? Oh, I got that. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the March 16th, 2016 meeting of the Northfield Township Planning Commission. If you could please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, roll call. Uh, I'll do the roll call. Mr. Roman? Here. Ms. Chockley? Here. Mr. Kuzno is absent with notice. Mr. Aquento? I am here. Uh, I am pre Ken Dignan present. Uh, Ms. Chick will, is also absent with notice, and Mr. Stanolicho is on his way. So we'll note his arrival when he gets here. Next item is approval of the agenda. Uh, there is one thing. Uh, originally, uh, under 12A, there was a uh, policy review and discussion, continuation of the discussion of goals and objectives. I'm still waiting for two members of the Planning Commission to get back to me with their priorities. So I'd like to remove that from tonight's agenda, and uh, we'll take that up at our next regularly scheduled meeting. Are there any other questions or additions to the agenda? I'll make a motion we approve the agenda as amended. Support. Okay. There's a motion by Roman, <coughs> supported by Aquento. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is call to the public. If there's anyone from the public that would like to address the board, please step to the microphone at the podium and state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Hello, my name is David Gordon, 5558 Helner Road. Um, I was kind of surprised to see, uh, I was just given a copy of the Cobalt survey, it was not in the packet, it wasn't online, uh, so I haven't even had a chance to look at it. But it was what I wanted to address this evening. Um, there's a number of reasons why I don't think we should be proceeding with this survey, although it looks like it's happening anyway. Number one is it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. Uh, from what I did see in the, in the uh, packet, we could save $12,000 by not by sobbing right now. The reason this is being done is because of Biltmore. It's cost us tens of thousands of dollars, and everybody seems to now agree that Biltmore and the way it was handled was bad, and that dealing with the master plan right now is premature, and it was a result of Biltmore. Number three, the township historically ignores surveys. I gave a pass out to everybody here, the 1996 survey, the 2010 survey. There's also a copy of the 2004 referendum, that was like a, uh, was a referendum on whether we want to turn our farms into subdivisions. 
and there's the township of Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor Township uh, eight question survey regarding preservation of land. Uh, number four, your previous planner told you it was a waste of time to do this survey, especially regarding the question of residential development. Uh, Mr. Stan Leach and I have had a little bit of email back and forth on this subject since the last time I was here, and he seems to be the opinion, and it's been stated, he stated it here, and other people on the Planning Commission have said the same thing, that there's questions that haven't been answered, such as, do we want growth, what kind, where, and do you want land preservation, and if so, are you willing to pay for it? Those two questions have been asked and answered multiple times, which you can see by looking at the surveys that have been done over the last 20 years. Uh, based on those surveys, preservation of the rural areas and our lakes is the number one priority. Residential development is number 17. Reducing the five acre zone to two acres or two and a half is even less popular. And if you want to deal with the question of farmland preservation or open space preservation versus development, you can't just ask the question, do you want growth, and if you don't, are you willing to pay for preservation? You also have to ask the question, are you willing to pay for development? Because there's costs involved in that as well. 30 seconds, Mr. Gordon. Um, so that's, those are the points I wanted to make. And uh, again, it's kind of distressing that the survey wasn't even available to the public until two minutes ago. So I would urge the uh, Planning Commission to postpone this until next year when you're supposed to be looking at the master plan in a five-year period. There's no evidence that this community is pushing for more residential development. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll move on. Correspondence. Uh, I didn't have any correspondence that came in. No. There was one that will be distributed to you, but it came in today. Uh, didn't have a chance to print it. I saw it as I was coming in. Um, that'll be distributed to you and in our packet next meeting. Reports. Uh, Board of Trustee report in the absence of Ms. Chick. Um, we'll we'll uh, go on to the ZBA report. Uh, we're meeting next week. We haven't Me met since. All right. Thank you, Ms. Trackley. Staff report. Is there anything from staff? <coughs> Just one thing. Um, yes. Uh, Chair, um, we will be uh, uh, advertising for the bylaws uh, shortly, and so those will be uh, available for you for the next meeting. Okay. All right. Planning consultant report. Anything? Okay. Thank you. We have no public hearings. Uh, so we'll move on to old business. First item of uh, under old business is uh, citizen survey, cobalt survey presentation. And uh, I'd like to welcome you to the podium and I'd like to kind of address the planning commission, please. Good evening. Thank you for having me here today. So in front of you, I believe you all received today a copy of the survey. Um, this is definitely a rough draft, just to give you a sense of where the survey language itself is at this point in time. <clears throat> the current draft is a combination of uh, things that Marlene and I have put together from a number of different sources uh, based on uh, conversations we've had on what some of the potential needs of the township is. I think fundamental question before we start diving into the, the precise language of the survey are really some of the things that, that this gentleman raised. Is this something that you're ready to move forward on now? Is it something that you want to delay? Do you want to cancel and, and recontract at some point in the future when you're ready to go? Um, those are really the questions to think about first before we start getting into the nitty gritty of, of the language and that kind of thing. So, so I can certainly answer any questions uh, from a broader perspective, uh, but I think it's something that you guys need to really think about in terms of what is your path forward, what is the timing, and then we can think about the survey instrument itself and what are the specific kind of decisions that you'd like the survey to support if it's residential development, if it's satisfaction, if it's prioritization, exactly what it is that you'd like to get out of that to guide your decision making going forward. So with that, are there specific questions that I can, can answer to, to be helpful? Okay. Well, I. I I think one of the decisions that we have to make 
here, uh, speaking to my fellow board members, is, is you know, do we want to continue to proceed with a survey? If so, do we want to do it now? Do we want to do it at a later date? Or do we want to wait and do it as part of a uh, greater comprehensive look at our master plan? Mr. Stanilicho. I've uh, looked through <coughs> the draft. I've looked through the drafts before that. And I've looked through the drafts before that. And I've looked through the, the old surveys and the questions that were asked. And frankly, I, the way some of these questions are asked, and I understand it's a draft, is I don't think it's going to get us any more information than we already have from the surveys we've had before. I think the most important questions that need to be answered, they need to be answered in a direct fashion. And I, I have uh, you know, talked to Mr. Gordon and through emails about this, is that I think there are the two important things that we need to find out. And it's not about whether people want garbage, garbage service or uh, services like that. The two things that have been nagging this community for many years that needs to be direct answered by the, by the survey is, number one, do you want growth or development to take place in this community? And I think it should end up being a simple yes or no, not graded on a favorable scale of one to five. And then if it's no, then that's the end of that for that person. If it's yes, then the question should be then asked, what type do you want? Do you want residential, do you want commercial, or do you want both? And then if they answer, you know, obviously they're going in a, sort of in a um, tree fashion, and then end up having a simple map, and you could end up taking the whole township and divide it up into four simple sections, or however you want to do this. And again, these are just generalized ideas, and say, where do you want to have this development occur? Asking people directly these questions so that we get a direct answer from the people that are going to be responding. Uh, and I think that will help clear up whether or not that we do have uh, a, f you know, a large majority of people that want growth or we don't have hardly any or I think we can get a percentage that way. Um, I, I'm in favor of doing what the community wants. And I know that these other surveys you can sort of derive that from it, but the question's not asked directly. And I think it needs to be asked. It needs to, we need to clear up that question. Um, the other thing about land preservation, I have no problems with that either. I, but I, I do believe that people need to be asked, do you, you know, do you want this? And if so, how do you want this to proceed to uh, have the township accumulate that? You know, do you want the township to look into a particular millage, you know, or pay extra? Are willing are people willing to pay extra for that? And if they are, then I believe that the township should move forward with something like that. And but I think we need to have some clear answers, yes and no, not not basically a a, a sliding scale. Um, and I think those two questions are what are important and most important for our survey to show at this point in time. Um, I think we can end up using a lot of the questions that were asked in pr prior surveys to, you know, to um, base our opinions upon. So um, that's just my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Stanilicho. Ms. Trackley? Um, when we decided to go ahead with the survey as the Planning Commission, um, there was some concern that we, we didn't have uh, a good feeling for what the public thought about um, development or not development, especially when um, Biltmore came up. Um, my opinion is that the master plan does represent what the community wants, uh, but this was supposed to settle it once and for all, um, having a survey like this to ask the question. Uh, and over time, as we dealt with several different drafts and, and there was a lot of criticism about the wording and um, it, it kind of got down to like two questions and then it's like why are we spending all of this money for two questions kind of like do you want development or do you not want development so um, after that uh, there was a movement to get a little on my part that if we were going to spend all this money and eventually do a survey we should have a good um, bank of questions to ask and that's why I decided to talk to uh, several different community groups, uh, the DDA and uh, Parks and Rec, um, although I didn't get 
specific questions from, um, from either of them. Um, I put together this list or, of questions, sent it to Mr. Um, St. Amour, and he put together this, this draft, which is extremely comprehensive. And it deals with a lot of subjects that our DDA would be concerned with, our schools would be concerned with. I did meet with Whitmore Lake um, Superintendent. And we could get a lot of valuable information from this survey. Yes, it's not all about uh, development or no development. Um, but if the township, if the Board of Trustees decides to go ahead with the survey, we will get a lot of valuable information to be able to use in the years to come. Now, it, does it have to happen this year, this survey? No, uh, but we be, would be delaying the, um, a lot of valuable input from our citizens about a lot of things that you know we would like to know about the downtown or about the US 23 North Territorial Area, um, about preservation programs and how to fund them. We would be able to get a lot of good information I don't think the public is going to change their mind about whether they like preservation or not based on this survey. But I think we will be able to get a lot of valuable information to move forward in the years ahead um, to kind of produce the, the kind of community that the public is expecting. So here you see kind of a more complete version than we've seen in the past. And I was hoping that um, when I was working with Mr. St. Amour on this, that uh, we would have some open-mindedness on the part of the commission to some of these other questions and on the part of the Board of Trustees to some of these other questions so that we could have um, a good framework for going ahead in the future. Thank you, Ms. Chockley. Yes, Mr. Aquinto. Sir, I'm sorry, what is your name? William. I'm sorry? William. Say William. So, a couple of questions I have. And you, how long have you been in this industry with surveys? About 20 years. Okay, good. So, you've got the experience. Mm -hmm. the qu one of the main questions I have is when people are taking surveys, are they less likely to truly complete a six page survey? Comparatively to maybe a two-page survey or three. Yes, they are less likely to complete a longer survey. Okay. Correct. And and again, that was my thought process, um, and that's why it's very important to keep it simple and sweet, so you get so because again, we are hoping to, with any survey we put out, our goal is to get a major amount of feedback from the residents. So in your recommendation, in order to accomplish that main goal as well, it sounds like, and I don't want to lead you, but mm -hmm. would you recommend a two to three page survey over a six page survey to accomplish that goal? Well, you've got a couple of different pieces that are, are happening. Uh, I think the six page survey is too long. I think there's some, some areas where we can pull it down at least four pages to get it a bit more reasonable. Uh, you definitely have a drop off for every page that you add, without question. Um, in the uh, contract that you, you wanted to, that you developed with Cobalt, you wanted to send a survey out to every resident in the township um, and, and we're hitting them with two waves. So you're going to have a very large number of responses coming back in. So if your response rate drops, uh, that's not as much of a concern because the absolute number of responses is going to be pretty high. So you do have some balancing there. But from a cost standpoint, and from a speed standpoint, from a distraction in terms of uh, how focused you want to be on just that handful of questions, I mean, less is more. But there's a reason that phone surveys don't generally ask you 100 questions. Right. And I would agree the main goal is to accomplish the items that Mr. Stanilacho had mentioned and discussed. Those are key pertinent to the Planning Commission Marlene, I know that you went and you talked to these other groups, and I was part of several of those groups, but we as a board asked you to just hold off from not doing that. You took that on your own, and I understand, and I appreciate the time you spent. Mm -hmm. But again, accomplishing the goal that we want, which is a major amount of people returning the survey and getting the feedback, 
in my opinion, we need to keep it to maximum. If we can keep it to a two-page, maximum three-page survey, we are going to be much more successful in accomplishing that goal. And uh, it is very relevant to get the an questions answered that Mr. Stanley brought forward uh, with that. And I also made some notes going through this. To me, I felt if we, there was a way to lump questions one through nine into one question would be very, uh, and there's probably a way to do that. Then lump 17, 18, 19, and 20 and 21 together as one or two questions. Lump 23 with 15 because there are, 15 is already referring to a map. or delete 23. To me, 24 and 25 is irrelevant for, for our purposes. I'm very much in favor of our school district and I'm a big supporter of our school district, but for our purposes, those are irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with 26, it's irrelevant for our purposes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Iquanto. Uh, yes, Mr. Fink. Yeah. Um, so I've done a number of survey work from a planning perspective. Um, and I wanted to make a few comments, if I may. Um, you know, I, I know that Marlene has um, done a tremendous amount of work on this, and uh, I don't want any of my comments to be construed as uh, a sort of uh, um, a negative take on that effort. Um, before you start a survey process, um, the first thing that you need to understand is what are the questions you want to answer. And the problem with this survey is, um, and I, I think William would agree with this, um, not that this survey is problematic, but that we really have not got, that we really, I think William would agree that not that this survey is a bad survey, but we haven't actually asked, answered the question, what do we want to answer? And so we're going at this wrong. Um, this survey, um, there are um, lots of questions in the survey. Very few of the questions are direct questions. And I, I would agree with Mr. Stan Lechko uh, in that when you do a survey, you need to have actionable data. You don't need to ask questions that can be construed one way or another or answered differently by one person or another or in some ways are irrelevant to the both the built environment of Whitmore Lake and Northfield Township and to the broader community as a whole. Um, number two, for example, availability of uh, affordable housing choices. No one knows what affordable housing choices are. It's, n it's not a debate that we're having in this community. Um, we're not the city of Ann Arbor where we're trying to come up with ordinances and strategies to uh, house uh, uh, you know, low-income uh, residents. I'm not saying it's not a valuable effort, but it's not what we're doing here. Um, we're a small town, and many of these questions are really related to uh, larger urban areas. Uh, Northfield Township is a place to visit, as a place to work. This is not an economic powerhouse. So we, you can't rate Northfield Township as a place to work because very few people actually have a career in Northfield Township. They, they drive into Ann Arbor, they drive into Brighton. These are all answers that we already know. Um, and so there's really no point in asking the question um, so that we end up getting results um, that we're not sure if they'll be positive results or negative results. Generally speaking, they'll be probably all over the map or slightly negative. And it just sort of puts us all in a bad light because we already know the answers to these questions. Um, so some of these high-level questions, um, they're just, I just don't think that they fit with Whitmore Lake and Northfield Township. But even before you get into the survey itself and the questions themselves, and I know I'm critiquing the, some of the questions, you've got to answer what the survey's purpose is. What is it about? If, if it's about the master plan, I don't think this survey is a valuable document for the master plan. If it is about Biltmore, 
which I don't think it is. And in fact, in truth and fact, I think the Biltmore issue will be uh, resolved one way or another prior to the survey even being sent out. So what, what do you want to answer? What is the purpose? What are the questions that you want answers for? And I think as a body, and if I may be so bold as to say this, and hopefully not step on anyone's toes, we really do need to have an honest dialogue with each other. What is it that you guys want to answer with respect to your planning policies? And if, if we don't have to do that tonight, we don't have to do that this year. Um, but those are the di those, that's the debate you really need to have before you send out a survey. Thank Sorry you, Mr. for Fink. the long no. dialogue that. or monologue. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Roman. Um, I just want to let it be known that um, I just received this copy tonight. I mean, I've seen draft and draft and draft in the past, and, and I'm not prepared tonight to even speak in the terms that some other commissioners have already just commented and looked at this. I haven't had a, a good enough time to even review this, this latest draft, um, but I tend to agree to step back and, and uh, re-examine what it is we need to look at. And, and, and I'm in no rush to, to proceed with the survey, so I just want to let that be known. Thank you, Mr. Roman. I guess my question uh, that I have for William here is, is you know, uh, our options with, with you. I mean, you spoke a little bit to that, but uh, as I look at things, you know, uh, one, I, I know we had a contract for a certain period of time. Um, is, is that time extendable? Is that, is, is it, do we have the ability to put it on pause yeah. more? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and is that, you know, yeah, I see that in that in that in that note. I'm I must have missed that when I was going through it. So that's and I guess it's really up to us as to what we'd like to do. I mean, I, I do want to say that I agree with Mr. Stanolicho on on many of his points. Uh, I, I, you know, I think we need to be very absolute and direct. If we if we proceeded with something like this, I think it should be half the size, and it should very direct but um, I understand the value of gathering more information uh, but again you know when I looked through it as much as some of that information might be nice to have from 1 to 11 really it was the second half of the survey that had any meat in it that really answered the question that we've we've kind of been asking and and We've wanted to have a more comprehensive idea of what the community is saying. So, that, I mean, that, that's my thought. So, yes, Mrs. Uh, Chockley. Yeah, I agree. It's, it is very long in its current um, configuration, and a lot of the questions are similar, and a lot could be removed, um, and it could get down easily to, you know, the three or four pages, I would think. Um, but the reason it has as many as it does is so that we had Mr. St. Amour's um, ability to c kind of s scientifically put them together so they weren't leading. And then we could just choose the ones that were important to us. And so I didn't want to make that determination about which ones would be the most important to us. And I just had it all in there. So we could, you know, we can do anything you want with it. I personally don't have any problem with putting it on the shelf for a period of time. And, and then we, we wouldn't get the benefit of some of these other questions, but if the commission has no interest in some of these other questions that might be helpful um, to, you know, to economic development, for instance, um, then you know, there's no reason to go ahead with it now. And I don't have any problem with it sitting on the shelf until it's time for the master plan to be looked at again. Um, I think the master plan's fine. Thank you, Ms. Chockley. Sure. Yes, please. Uh, no, no. Oh, turn it on, and then it works. Uh, 
doing a survey is a form of public participation. And when, when a public body, when anyone undertakes public participation, uh, you're asking people to give of their time and share their thoughts and beliefs with you. And in turn, I've found over the years it's good practice to tell the public what they're going to get in return or what you're going to do with the information that you get. Mm -hmm. And I think the point that several people have, have brought up this evening, what is the purpose of the survey, I'd recommend that the commission, when we get to the point where you can clearly tell the public what we're going to do with what you give us, with what we get back from the survey, we, that we do that before we send it out and ask people to share their thoughts. Because that's, that is a, uh, a quick and easy way to build distrust and discontent and so on among the folks who really want to contribute to their community, which I find is almost everybody that lives in a town cares okay. about it, no matter where you are. Okay, that's excellent. Thank you. That's an excellent I, point. I, I, yes, Mr. Iaquinto. Um, William, this contract is due to expire this summer? It is. So if we made a motion to extend the contract for one additional year, mm -hmm. freeze the pricing, that would be acceptable to you? It would be acceptable, yes. Okay. I'm prepared to make a motion. Okay, Mr. Sten Mr. Stanalijo? Well, first of all is that we can make a recommendation to the township board to correct. make the extension. So yeah, um, we, we can't extend that. But um, my question, or not question, my comment about a lot of these questions is a lot of them end up asking the same thing over and over and over again. You know, section one here, just, to, just for an example, ask the same question multiple times. It's basically, what's your quality of life do you feel in, the, in this community? Um, and I know if I got a survey like this in the mail, I certainly wouldn't, I'd be looking at it, it's way too long for me to fill out, frankly. I mean, I just wouldn't do it. Um, so, you know, I think in, when we try and sit down and figure out what we want to accomplish out of this, we need to make the questions so that they're simple, simple, um, not complicated, easy to fill out so that people actually will do it. I think the more responses we get back, the better it's going to be survey-wise. So, um, and I'm all in favor of postponing this too. Thank you, Mr. Stanalijo. Uh, I have a question for Ms. Hodges. So if, if, if we were to uh, make, ask the Township Board to extend this a year, and it, it sounds to me also uh, that we could really, the, us as a commission and you, uh, along with Mr. Fink, sit down and really identify that in the future and, and then come to Cobalt to execute the, the survey questions that we have come up, or the survey that questions we want real answers from the community for. You know, like, like she said, so we can tell the stakeholders sure. in the community, this is what we want to know and then they're not wondering and scratching their heads as to what sure. we're asking for. Would it, that, it, would that be something that yes. you could do? That's fundamentally that something that would be very useful it? from my perspective as well, okay. because there has not been clarity and consensus on exactly what the survey is trying to do. And so right. you end up with a survey yeah. that's not. And, and Cobalt is the, entity, I'm sorry, <coughs> is the entity that's responsible for putting it into forms and getting it sent and making sure it gets returned to the best of their ability so you get a statistically significant yeah. response. And that's doing the statistic expertise. evaluation as well. Correct. Correct. Yes. But they're, that's right. right. But and if I may, Chair? No, uh, hold on one moment, Mr. Stanalijo. I, I just want to say that uh, you know, in, in doing this, I, I'd say we should start the process maybe towards the end of the year to at least start talking about this so that then by the middle of next summer that there can be something done since we're extending it for a year. But I think that once we start this discussion, we should have people from the community that want to participate in the formation of ideas or questions we want to ask, have them participate so that it's, a, it's not just us, but it's an active form that's going on. And that way, I think people will feel more included. Thank you, Mr. Sinalicha. Uh, Mr. Iquinto, did you have something? I have a motion. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Fink, did have something to say. It's okay. I move to recommend to the Township Board of Northfield Township from the Planning Commission makes a recommendation to extend the contract with Cobalt Community Research 
for one year and freeze the price structure. There's a motion by Mr. Aguento. Is there support? Support by Mr. Sanalicho. Discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Appreciate your patience with thank us. Thank you. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. You're very welcome. All right. Thank, thank you. you. The comment that I was Mr. Fink? Yeah, the comment that I was going to make earlier and just, just to um, piggyback on what Ms. Hodges has said, um, you know, uh, William's role in this is to create uh, action or good data for us to analyze. It really is our role to provide him with what is the answers that we would like to perceive. Not what, not what we want to hear, but what is what are the answers to the questions? Or what, 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 are, the are, questions? The, what, what are the, the questions, questions we, want answered? we want answered? Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tongue tied there. So anyway. OK. Thank you. Moving on. Our next item on the agenda is under old business, proposed zoning ordinance amendments <coughs> for churches. This time I'm going to have to ask that uh, I'm going to recuse myself from this conversation or, uh, due to the nature. You know what? We do not have a. We won't have a quorum then. Quorum. If Mr. Iaquinto does the we same, have but we don't have an. Yeah. We, we, have, we have a quorum. We're sitting here. We can. We can have a discussion still. W what is proper, Sally? Because I was going yeah. to recuse yeah, myself that's a good as well. Question. So, in anticipation of this, I did uh, in investigate a couple of sources, including looking at Robert's rules, and as I understand it and read, quorum applies to conducting the meeting. So you have, a, you have a quorum to conduct a meeting. You can, uh, even with uh, abstentions, continue to discuss and vote on the item that's on the agenda, because there, there is a quorum. OK, thank you very much. So I'm going to ask Mr. Stanilicho uh, if he wouldn't mind to take the meeting over uh, for this particular item, as uh, I'm abstaining due to uh, potential conflict of interest. And I th Mr. I I am uh, going to abstain from this discussion as well. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, before us, we have the um, alterations and amendments that are recommended by uh, our planner. Um, I think these are the ones that we had asked from our last meeting. This I've uh, presented them as I understood your direction. There are two uh, aspects of it that I would like to bring back to your attention to make sure there's concurrence. And if, we, if there is any question among the commission members, of course, you might uh, decide to postpone until you have more members present. But uh, the first uh, item that I wanted to uh, make sure was your direction is we have the SR2, Single Family Residential District, currently has no uh, assembly uses or large assembly uses and it does not permit churches. We have at your direction a proposed an amendment that would permit churches in that single family residential district. And then the other item that had some discussion uh, was uh, that I noted was the RTM district where you've asked that we remove theaters, auditoriums and meeting facilities and also remove churches. Um, in thinking about, and I've prepared the amendment as you directed, in thinking about that since the meeting, um, I uh, understand the commission's concern was not to use the land that we have a limited quantity of for research and technology for large theaters and auditoriums, but there are uh, occasionally with a large office or light industrial use, they have meetings, they have uh, conferences and so on and may wish to have an accessory facility for that kind of use that might be more than just a single conference room. Uh, so I wanted to bring that up this evening. If uh, The only action that I'm asking you to consider this evening is scheduling a public hearing so you would not have to make that decision this evening. It could be debated at the public hearing. But uh, I did want to ask the question to the members to make sure that's the direction, the direction that we've written, if that's the one you continue to wish to follow. Um, Ms. Shockley? Yes. I, I really would like to um, maintain the option for a business that's um, 
cited in the RTM to actually have an auditorium or meeting facilities. Now I see it as a permitted accessory use, so that would be associated with a business and inside a business. So does that mean that we would uh, have to allow churches in that district? Um, I, I, right now we have churches in that district. Mm -hmm. And we're not, well, this amendment has us removing churches from that district. That's right. Uh, that we went to all the effort to allow in that district. Um, would we still have to allow churches in that district if the theaters, auditoriums, and meeting facilities were a permitted accessory use to a, a business that was associated uh, or cited in the RTM? I believe it would be wise to leave it in there? To, to leave the church to continue to permit churches. Okay. Um, then I'm in favor of leaving the churches in the RTM as a conditional use and still maintaining the theaters, auditoriums, and meeting um, facilities in the RTM for the businesses that are cited there. The, uh, the question that I have in reading this is that if a business is, hit, builds a structure and they put a meeting room in that, that's part of their planned use of their facility. So if they want to have a meeting room in their facility, this isn't really even any, anything that should be in, in there as something separate. I would think that these um, theaters, auditoriums, and meeting rooms would end up being as a separate, as you point out, a separate structure entirely, that that's what its sole intended purpose would be rather than part of the original structure of the building. Because pretty much all businesses are going to have meeting rooms in them. The, uh, the way the ordinance is written, this, this district has that extra category of permitted accessory uses. And if you read through the item, as I've, I've given it to you in the, in the draft, it says it's commercial office and service uses that are located, designed, or intended to support and complement principal permitted uses that are located in the RTM district. So it's things, it's the incidental things that make a good office district, a good light industrial district. It's the ability to have daycare or office supply sales. And it's not written that those have to be part of the same building. These are things that could, the way I interpret it, it could be they could be on separate sites. It's just not the primary purpose of the district. Um, so in answer to your comment slash question, Commissioner, I think these are, the, the way this is written, these are in your ordinance freestanding facilities, not, accept, not internal so if major we, if accessories. We, so if we actually eliminated that wording, and eliminate, eliminate, then we'd have to eliminate churches also then too, since it's being treated differently, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. But that wouldn't, pre, you know, that wouldn't exclude a business from actually having meetings on their facilities. Um, unless it's unless they have it or build a separate structure outside. <clears throat> I mean, it, it's not you know it's it's uh, as w when you have major accessories with a use, it's not always a simple clear distinction of being in a separate building or not. It's the extent and the purpose and the quantity of the use. I'm confident that we can clarify this, um, taking a, a closer look at it um, in the in the future. Um, I mean, if we went through and, and, and accepted your amendments as, as they currently right. are at this point, it's not going to really stop any business from having a meeting, having a meeting or... Room. No, it will not. Okay. Not. So it's really just, it's, it's just to basically make it and clear it up so that we don't have um, a, a distinction um, of having, if we want to eliminate churches out of there, we've got to eliminate these areas also, or these these types of uh, as as, as, ex as accessory structures to the district, but their principal uses themselves. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. Mr. Roman. And, and that's, and that's uh, was my thought. Obviously, I, I brought it up initially. <laughs> uh, the principal use is the consideration. That, that That's the main uh, crooks of the matter that in the RTM district, having a, a standalone theater or a, 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 another use assembly use of that type, um, and, and no way I thought it was implying to how you know having a, a meeting in your in your building. Um, so I still stand uh, with the original thought 
that we have proposed on the paper. So that's my that's my point. All right. Well, um, any any other discussions on this? Well, I, I'm a. Uh, I'd like to put through a motion to set up a public hearing for the purpose of amending the uh, sections in the letter dated March 9th from our planner with the um, amended sections and wording as it's presented before us. I support. All right, we have a motion by myself and support by Mr. Roman. Any discussion? Um, those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stanalicho. No. It, it, It'll be set when at that at the next possible meeting yeah. that it can fit into well we'll figure that yeah. and notice it appropriately okay. thank you and lisa you have who voted in the affirmative for that and that we abstained thank you just wanted to make sure that was noted all right next item on the agenda is new business which we have none uh next is minutes uh, you'll see included in your packet were minutes from december 2nd and 16th and then uh, the march 2nd March 2nd is the only ones we have to consider for voting on. The other two are already approved because of the meetings passing. Um, if they're not approved at the next meeting, they're automatically approved by state law. I can't find reference to that. It, it is, is in the statute. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, Looking at the March 2nd meeting, does anyone have any the only thing I, on page, let's, there you go, on page one. The only thing I see is that um, it says the approved agenda was 6-0. Did somebody come in late? I don't know who came in late. I, I would have better if somebody came in late. Okay. So Alright, so that just needs to be changed, that's all I saw. Okay. Anything on page two? Nope. And finally page three. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the March second meeting as amended. I'll support that. So motion by Iquento, supported by Dignan. All those in or discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, policy review and discussion uh, was removed from the agenda. It will be put out in our next agenda item. And uh, I still have a couple commissioners that I need to have the goals and objectives uh, priorities set out for. Um, all right, next item is call to the public. Any member of the public would like to address this board, please step to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Seeing none? Okay, we'll go on. Comments from the commissioners? Let's start on the left-hand side. Mr. Roman, anything? Um, I, I just want to, you know, make a comment again about uh, receiving um, in a timely fashion some packets. I, I felt like um, very much uh, at a disadvantage speaking about the survey tonight. Um, I wasn't even home. I haven't even checked my email um, and apparently came this afternoon. So um, I would hope that in the future uh, it gets to all, uh, all commissioners and all pertinent people in a, hopefully the week before. Obviously somebody had uh, or some people had access to it possibly prior. 
Um, it was, it was emailed out. It was emailed, it was emailed out a few weeks back to everybody on the board. It was emailed to the whole everybody. The survey. survey. Yes, that survey was emailed out a few weeks back to everybody on the board. You're certain? Yes. Well, it just wasn't in the packet this this time I, around. Okay. But I may be. It needs to be. In the I packet. may be incorrect, but um, it needs to be in this current packet. Yep, absolutely. As an attachment absolutely. with the whole agenda packet. That's my point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Ms. Chockley? Uh, no comment. Mr. Stanley I would like to make sure that we um, get our bylaws on the uh, for our agenda for next oh. meeting. You came in late. We we oh. did we're noticing that and it'll be on our next oh, agenda. Great. Yep. Yep. All right. It was just a noticing time line that Okay. Um, just want to make sure that we uh, keep our men and women in uniform. And our thoughts and prayers that are keeping us safe and allowing us to have this freedom of expression. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sinalicha. Mr. Iquento. I uh, think and shop local for the businesses that are here, and uh, everyone enjoy themselves in this uh, nice warm temperature. Thank you. All right, excellent. Um, the only thing I have, I'd like to thank the community for coming out for the uh, National Honor Society lasagna dinner last night. It was wonderful at the Whitmore Lake High School. Um, I know they appreciate all of the community support. And uh, that's all I have. Uh, the next regular meeting is on April 6th, 2016. We will have a public hearing uh, at that meeting. And if there's nothing else. Motion, there motion to adjourn. Motion by Roman, supported by Iquento. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried.